Hey, Jack, I told you I was going to bug you some more. You got some minutes? Of course. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I was wondering, because I figured you're the master at this, um, what are some useful features between Iceberg and S3 that you think get overlooked from your perspective there at Amazon? That's an interesting question, especially you say overlooked. Uh, <laughs> That's very true, uh, a very interesting statement because uh, Iceberg has been advocating what we call the file I.O. interface. And uh, the S3 file I.O. is one of the highlight for Iceberg uh, that people really like to use. It has lots of the unique features and really works well with the cloud storage like at S3. Um, but over the past, uh, a year or two years, as we are working with different customers at different levels. Uh, typically, we interact with many enterprise level users. Uh, they really use S3 with lots of different features. And uh, it, it is uh, a very interesting journey for us to integrate all sorts of S3 features uh, with Iceberg as a relatively new table format. Uh, for example, one of the things we see is that people configure a ton of stuff in the S3 bucket policy. And um, that has been working well with Hive tables because you just define a bucket policy against a prefix and everything works. But for Iceberg, for example, you have, uh, I, I believe three or four different table locations you can put your data in. Uh, also people do, for example, migrations from Hive tables to Iceberg tables, which means their Hive table might be in one location, while the Iceberg table is in the other location. So you need to handle more locations uh, for Iceberg tables. So what we did, I believe in open source is we kind of decided to consolidate all the location parameters. Uh, there has been different PRs put up um, to make sure that people are aware of all those locations and also configure those locations in their bucket policies. Um, also with the S3 file I.O., especially the location provider and the object storage mode, uh, users are able to put files in kind of random prefix locations. That solves the issue about uh, S3 throttling, but it also provides more challenge for you defining a bucket policy that works for your table because you now you don't really even have a prefix for your table anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, what we did is to add a feature for people to attach S3 tags for whatever files you write in S3. So now if uh, I believe this is written more in the, the Iceberg documentation, but you are able to specify whatever key value pairs for your S3 file, S3 file tags uh, in your Iceberg catalog property uh, which you can define in your Spark session or uh, whatever you are using. So whatever file you are written to your Iceberg table is going to have those tags attached. And bucket policies works very well with S3 tags. So now the issue is solved in that front. Um, <laughs> another thing we see people uh, usually use with S3 is the lifecycle policy. Uh, so they are able to define uh, how long the file should be in S3 before they are moved to like cheaper storage such as S3 Glacier to save their cost. Um, traditionally, it is also done just with a prefix plus some timeouts for a file. So for example, I define my file well expiled to Glacier storage layer in three months, then everything will do the transition automatically. But for Iceberg, because the table is versioned, and also you have snapshot expiration that is supposed to be the expiration process. Uh, it becomes more difficult for people to control this kind of behavior and works it well with lifecycle policy. We got multiple complaints from customers saying that, hey, I, uh, all of a sudden my iceberg table stops working because some of my files are expired <laughs> automatically with the lifecycle policy. So, um, the solution we can, first of all, is still tag because lifecycle policy also works well with tag. So if you tag your all, your, all the files in your table and you define a holistic lifecycle policy against that, then uh, everything will still work uh, regardless of where your file is in different locations. And uh, 
Secondly, what we did uh, is to make the um, what we call the expert snapshot process uh, more coherent with people who define lifecycle policies, so that you can say that in the lifecycle policy, I don't expire my uh, any file in my aspect table. But uh, when you run snapshot expiration, instead of deleting the file, instead I'm actually putting that uh, with a different tag, for example. Uh, what we call delete tag feature in Asperg. Um, so then that tag, you can define a different lifecycle policy to say that I will immediately remove that to my storage layer, my glacier layer. And uh, that will be able to uh, fulfill the whole story of uh, saving cost on S3 while maintaining the full table integrity um, hmm. perspective. Oh, that is really interesting. I hadn't heard about that one. See, <laughs> this is why it's <laughs> it's always good to ask. Dang. Well, thank you, Jack. That that was really informative. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Let me know if you have more questions. Oh, you can bet that I will. <laughs> See ya.